Hey everybody and welcome to our It's Up podcast show. On this week's podcast, AMD has recently announced a launch of their latest Radeon 7000 series of graphics cards and they did it affordably. Yes, with gamers in mind. Uh, but when it comes to computer chips, Intel, is Intel making a comeback? Oh, well, let's find out. Uh, but also, uh, does it really matter? Yes, it does. Matter has been launched. What is Matter? Well, it's a global protocol for all smart uh, home ecosystems connecting, you know, big brands such as Google, Apple, Amazon, Samsung, and others to work together. And uh, Stephen will be taking us through that. Also on the show, we'll find out what's happening with Twitter. Stephen will take us through the mind of Elon Musk. So let's get the show on the road. Stephen, what's happening at Twitter? Well, uh, the mind of Elon Musk is uh, a very interesting place uh we call it a uh right now as it stands um his mind has turned twitter into a bit of a chaotic hellscape because um not only are advertisers leaving but um the look of the activity on there has been dropping from people that used to be very fervent uh, twitter users uh they they don't they're not mm -hmm. exiting the platform because again it's very easy to get a hold of personalities and whatnot on that platform uh, it's just like having Facebook because uh, you don't use it, but you know people are on there, so you can get a hold of people as you need to. It's just like yeah. um, it's just like email now, right? Like I've had my account um, mm -hmm. since it started. Like oh my god, like it it at the beginning, like months after Twitter launched, I had an account and I had yeah. my name, and that's why I have at Stephen Fung at twit at, at Twitter dot com, right? Yeah, so, I, I also have that. Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not letting that go. It will never, ever go away for, for me. I will continue to be on the platform, seeing what's happening. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, uh, just over a week. Uh, and as when this podcast drops, it'll be just a little bit over a week when, uh, when mm -hmm. Elon Musk walked into Twitter headquarters with a sink and <laughs> put it on their desk and said, let this sink in. And this, something is going to happen. We knew that something was going to happen. Yeah. We just didn't know what would happen. So after he dropped the sink, um, yeah. you know, like it, people started moving to other platforms, allegedly. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, things so started to get bad when uh, when eventually uh, mm. Elon started to fire people, which we knew would happen. It started no, that, with the executive board. Inevitable, yeah. Yeah. So the executive board's gone. Everyone mm -hmm. that ran especially the legal counsel that took him down and made him buy Twitter, they're all gone, <laughs> right? So it's like revenge, isn't it? <laughs> it is revenge. Um, it, it is a revenge, a vengeful thing that has uh, that Elon Musk has done uh, mm -hmm. it, to to um, to the public. Uh, however, yeah. it also might also be, and again, Elon Musk is kind of a, a black and white kind of mm -hmm. uh, guy. Um, he is on the spectrum, which gives him certain superpowers that allows him to focus on things, look at the numbers, mm. and be very methodical and very logical about things. So let's not forget about the fact that well, he is like he, that. Yeah, he's he's a he's got a scientist background, right? Yeah, his his major is in science, and if you look at SpaceX rockets and all that, that's all really really science, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so, it, it requires a lot of focus, and it yeah. also requires him to lead from the top to actually find the same people mm. to have the same amount of focus that he does they're willing to do that work not everyone is willing to do that so it's yeah. going to be tough times at twitter um and what the the reason why it's going to be tough is not only have people been been uh exited from the company fired uh the 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 goal is to basically remove half of the uh the workforce uh but specifically um 15 percent of that of that number is coming from layoffs in the moderation and privacy space Right. Um, now, this wasn't done without consultation. Uh, Elon Musk, to his credit, did go and talk to certain governing bodies about you know the privacy, mm. the moderation, and everything like that. He did his uh, his uh, listening tour, right? As mm -hmm. CEOs do, right? But he listened yeah. to um, people on the outside to see, okay, well, if we do these certain things, will that meet your approval, right? So he's gone that route. Um, to be perfectly honest, um, Twitter is actually an old school OG social media company. So because we were both in that space uh, looking mm -hmm. at what was happening, like the fine China that a lot of these companies were were, were, were uh, buying, um, all, all these perks, the exercise rooms and everything, you know that there's going to be a lot of bloat in these companies versus yeah, where when Elon started, 
he he started uh, bootstrapping tents and 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 they were building cars by hand right so he's used to that space so he probably went and seen that type of mm. bloat he probably started to remove people as he saw fit and without realizing that in doing so, he would run into some uh, legal issues with the law. California law has a certain period of time where you have mm. to give certain notice to your employees before you get rid of them. Oh, uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the problem is, is that he didn't adhere to that, and he's gotten into a little bit of legal issue. There's a class action brewing right now, so he'll be on the hook for that no matter what. Sometimes you have to break a few eggs in, in, in his yeah. mindset. I'm just thinking with his mindset. And it'll probably be less painful to do it this way and pay out after the legal stuff with the class action if he were to leave everything alone. Because as of buying Twitter, the $44 mm. billion dollar deal, Twitter is going private. That means that they now have to make money. They can't just raise more capital. They have to make money from day one. Yeah. So with with the people going uh, and they want to actually save expenses of up to a billion dollars a year because that's what the interest is. That's Ooh. a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot so, of money. <laughs> so things have not been smooth in this transition. Some of the hiccups have been, um, for example, AOC's account and some some others. But AOC is very profile, high profile because she's oh, yeah. a public guy. Uh, her account, after uh, criticizing Elon Musk, had some issues, <laughs> <laughs> right? It, it went a little funky. And yeah. rumor has it, um, and I can't remember where the source was, and you know, if there's a source out there, please drop a comment below. But apparently, as some of the employees were leaving the building when they were fired, they were let go, um, mm -hmm. several of them, uh, or a team of them, locked out Elon Musk's account uh, on the way out. Automatically. <laughs> just <laughs> locked them out. Like, he just basically turned them into a Trump account, right? He locked them out, it's right? It's a technical glitch. It's a, it's a glitch, right? <laughs> Allegedly, right? And because of those layoffs and everything, because of the mass uh, exodus, mm -hmm. exodus of people in in, in, in broad strokes, uh, apparently, uh, they made some mistakes. So some people mm. were actually hired back immediately because a mistake was made. <laughs> they no. weren't supposed to be let go. Uh, does this get around the class action? I don't know. But, you know, people were were mm. that were let go. Uh, maybe it was done on purpose. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just in the shuffle. They made a few mistakes. Again, you have an entire team going into clean house. Mistakes will be made. Uh, mistakes will yeah. happen. Yeah. And what has been described by people, uh, by experts in, in the field is that it was similar to how uh, the transition team that went in after Obama from the Trump administration Oh, right. Came yeah. in and just did a bunch of things that were uncharacteristic and did not follow protocol. So That's true. it's a mess right, right now. But according to Elon and in, in his frame of mind, it wasn't, you know, because this is, this needed to be done because we're going private. Mm -mm -mm. We have to make a billion dollars in, in interest payments every year. And this company must make money. So the first thing that one of the first things that has been done, and this is like just a week or two in, is that he will start to charge for Twitter verification. And that's where he got into a kerfuffle with uh, AOC as well as Stephen King. What's, what's, what's this uh, thing? Like verification for what? So there's two like levels that people are aware of right now that mm -hmm. make people special on the platform. Uh, right. There is Twitter Blue where you can actually um, – uh, you can edit your 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 tweets. You can um, have a, a, a ad free experience, and right. then you have verifications, which were so the blue is more of a premium, it's premium like, like YouTube premium, right? Or exactly, like that. right. You so you have pay more control. and you get the extra features. You get more uh, ad free and stuff like okay. that. You know, like right. so so that's all right, right? So verification used to be bestowed on people like. Um, presidents, uh, Congress members, oh, right, like right, you have right, to right. be a personality that has the risk of being impersonated, right? right so whether you're a celebrity, film star, music, pop yeah. star, uh, a political figure, yeah. someone of importance. High profile, someone of high, high profile. importance, right? And then you can get verified as that person, not like a, a fake account. That like, is right. Right. Okay. That you. is right. Okay. So, so you have to pay for that now. You see what you're saying? Uh, Elon Musk is saying that you may have to pay for that privilege. Okay. Okay. But okay. here's the here's the here's the problem. Um, 
initially it was going out at twenty dollars. Right. No one liked that. And like okay. a like a like a sales car salesman, he's like, Okay, everyone, how about eight dollars? <laughs> so allegedly this is all going through at eight dollars, seven ninety nine. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's going to be, and there were a lot of memes, including one that Elon made up himself. It's like, um, it, it was, I, I'm trying to describe it to you, but basically he had the meme face of the angry guy and then the happy guy. Um, so in the mad guy, he's like, oh, uh, I like my Starbucks latte for $8 and I can consume this in 30 minutes, or I'm angry because I have to pay $8 for Twitter and I get this for 30 days. Oh, for, so, for a month, right? Yeah. So okay. he's equating that that type of um, the the value proposition is yeah. is, ske is wrong because Starbucks you can only have for thirty minutes and it makes you fat. That's true. That's true. And, and then, but you can have Twitter for full thirty days <laughs> with all these extra features, which we don't know about yet. Right. Plus, yeah, a, we, plus have, we haven't seen those features yet, so we don't know what until it is until they come out. Whether it's worth that eight dollars, yeah. Uh, well, we'll find out. The but other thing about me yeah, talk about memes. Have you seen that one with? Uh, the guy you know you've seen the iron man with the glove right the yeah. infinity glove. he snaps all his plays <laughs> oh i saw another one where he's like talking about <laughs> pronouns in the meme oh, he's right. got this like okay. what's going on uh the only pronouns of uh fire twitter employees are was and were oh, oh wasn't that that's like that's not funny man oh, like come wow. on dude like have a little bit of empathy and yeah. unfortunately um that's one of the things with with uh <laughs> with having being on the spectrum is that you know the empathy may not yeah. be there but like with any um private company now taken to private now and uh, making money like you said uh you you need to slim down you need to really slim down your business right or, or the, the company if it's too bloated and there's too much staff doing certain things which are no yeah. point then they need to you know really cut down and, and 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 trim it down but the other thing is twitter has always been behind all the other social medias in terms of you know w what is it is is it just just posting stuff um and if it is what else you know if you look at all the other uh, uh bigger companies like now meta you have instagram you have a whatsapp you have of course facebook original right and all the others uh, with twitter see they could do what a lot of the other big companies or the social media companies can do is have more features. Like I said, I think one of the shows before. Yep, the last show. Payment systems, right? Payment systems. You can have uh, more um, uh, photos because at the moment you can only post four photos on Twitter. For now, yeah, for now. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you want to be Instagram, then you, you got to post yeah. at least 10, right? And so, uh, Same as your competitor. And other things like that. So and there's a lot of work that you could do to it and to improve it. And if, like you said before, unfortunate, if it's one of the ways to improve the company, to improve the service, is to charge people for the blue, right, to the yeah. blue, and, of course, slim down the, the team so that uh, it becomes more profitable. Mm -hmm. Profit means more uh, money to develop new products, develop yeah. new features. So that's my take Well, that. Well, that. um, funny enough, um, Jack Dorsey, who was the mm. previous founder of uh, Twitter, yeah. Uh, previous uh, CEO for at least two terms, uh, who left uh, last November. Mm -hmm. He act and, and put the current uh, executive team in place. Um, he endorses um, Elon Musk as the person that can do the right thing. Um, the reason why is because when he grew Twitter, he grew it in the time where there was a lot of bloat. People were like taking up engineers, even though they didn't need them, but they would put them on stupid jobs just to retain them, right? Because, you know, like it, it, it it's a time where, you know, you got to grab as much, mm. it's a land grab. You got to grab as many talented people as possible, Talent, yeah. even yeah. if you don't need them right now. And they never, and I guess in a, in a sense, like his statement tells me that they never wrote the place for all these people. They're just kind of hanging out. In a sense, mm. they weren't doing the good work that they're capable of. And um, Elon Musk coming in and cleaning a house uh, was basically mm. the result of all that bloat that accumulated over the number of years. Yeah. Because because yeah. um, Twitter was trying to get bigger. They're trying to grow. They acquired Periscope, a few other things, Vine. Um, but they never made heads or tails of how to integrate that into the system. They have always been the smallest of all the largest with uh, social media mm, platforms, mm, but mm. they um, had such a small percentage of people creating content 
versus people that were on the platform. It didn't make sense for advertisers either. So they had struggled with trying to make money as well, too. Um, and, yeah. and Jack Dorsey himself apologized because, yeah, that unfortunately, that was kind of my doing at the beginning. But we didn't know what to do. Right. So we have all these people. Yeah. Elon Musk cleaned house, fired a bunch of people, let a bunch of people go. Hopefully they end up in better places because, I mean, I can't imagine being a very talented uh, designer, uh, UX designer, coder, software developer, mm -hmm. and being in a place where my skills are completely underutilized, right? Like I'm a talented, but no. here I am. I've got this great job and everything like that that pays me to do nothing. I wonder how yeah, many people in that company true. were like that. They become complacent. They're not hungry anymore, right? So mm. uh, I have to look at, uh, like, I want to look at both sides. I want to, I want to believe that people want to work and do work, but you no, know, maybe some people feel that they're more privileged than that and that they should get the gold key ticket because they're a Twitter mm. <laughs> and they should yeah, sit I mean, around all day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Elon Musk is just like any other uh, CEO with a big, big dream with a big, uh, you know, because than himself. I mean, if you look at um, Apple, right? Yeah. If you look at Steve Jobs, he was a, a similar guy. Didn't like it. Just fire you like that, right? Uh, if it wasn't going his direction, his way, he'll just go off in a, you know, a crazy kind of uh, uh, field day. But uh, it, it's, it's one of those things where he has he has a vision, he has a dream, right? And he's going to take that Twitter, I think, like I said, yep. you know, to, to somewhere where it's going to be, uh, if not a competitor, a major competitor, but at least you you improve on the service that uh, he always enjoyed because he's a yeah. prolific Twitter Twitter person. Well, that's <laughs> actually a, that's actually a strength. Um, one of the funny things about Twitter is that the mm. the is that the executive team and most of the employees don't actually use the platform, and that's kind of a, <laughs> a negative, right? You don't know the product until you actually use the product. Oh, so my. that's a that's a pro. Like he, uh, Elon Musk is addicted to Twitter. He's on there all the time. He's looking for instant gratification. That's why he's even developing product pricing and all this other stuff by just asking the audience. You know, community based. It's a good thing for the most part. But at yeah. the same time, though, it's like being a drug dealer and being addicted to your own your own drugs. <laughs> you don't do that. You never do that, right? You yeah, have to you have should, an arm's you, you length away. That's right. You don't uh, use your own product. <laughs> exactly, right? But, uh, you know, it's a good perspective to have, but, you know, like maybe you lay off a little bit on those lines, dude. Like stop yeah, chopping yeah. at it. And, and maybe have, maybe finally have that PR comp part of Twitter to mm -hmm. give you that arm's length to stay away so that you can get the objective feedback rather than all the emotional baggage of Yeah, he gets Elon. very emotional. I yeah. remember that time when um, there was, I think it was a, a, a tragedy, well, I was like an accident, tragedy, and event in uh, Thailand with yeah. these boys in the caves, right? Yeah. And then he he got a stint with this the cave diver. One of the divers, he, right? Yeah, it was. He just went off, and you know, he got fined for it, actually. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> or someone, sued or something. You know, like not getting too personal, but people have hurt Elon in the past, and I think that's, that's true. manifesting that's true. itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially, you know, when you look at his family, you know, one of the people that he should be looking up to is his dad. And yeah. his dad's not exactly the guy that you want to look up to, <laughs> if you uh, know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, it all stems with, uh, you know, family. Yeah. Like so, but, uh, um, yeah. but yeah, like, I don't think, like, there's a big 4D chess being played here, I, I'm pretty sure, because uh, Elon has said all along is that he wants to educate humans. Mm. How do you mm. do that if you don't have a system in place that allows that authentication to happen, right? So that's 799. Whatever it is, and we don't know enough right now, um, you, is that is that to maintain the blue check mark that is already in place with a lot of these different accounts, or is it a new verification system where you have to resubmit to keep that blue check that you already have and it's, to get it again? Yeah, it's almost like uh, you know you have to submit your ID to yeah. get the K. YC know your customer yeah like for for banks and yeah. uh, financial institutions or Celsius like that so, stupid company yeah <laughs> I'm still my waiting money. for my refund man <laughs> but okay, anyhow. it wasn't a lot but uh, I tell you what though uh, but still yeah hurts. but yeah it still hurts so I mean if you if you submit your I mean you have to fully submit your ID I guess because that you're not a financial institution yeah. there's no need to keep that data but at least you verify that you are a human like you know those uh, capture kind of uh, capture only does yeah. so much though right I it mean, only does so much yeah 
But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's low. If you in social media, you know as well as I do, there's tons and tons of bots and oh, yeah. fake accounts and things like that. It, it's so hard to to kind of like filter which ones are real, which ones are not. Yeah, uh, they contact me, you know. So having that that checkbox, you know, whether it's Twitter blue, whether you know you have verification on uh, who's genuine, yeah. official accounts. I, I would prefer that, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, at least I know can see, hey, this guy is genuine. This guy is ref- uh, verified. And everyone is a bot. <laughs> <laughs> everyone else is a bot, right? <laughs> and, a bot. and this is one of the uh, the things that I, I wrote down is that, you know, like, mm. okay, if they – if it's not done correctly, what would stop someone with a bot army verifying every single one of their hundred bot bots, mm. right? Like well, what's the mechanism? Yeah. That's true. I mean, have you seen that? Um, I think it was a, I think it was a documentary, a very short one, uh, about this a teenager. Yeah, teenager now. He's written a program, a program right that is a, basically a bot that auto scans all the websites where they're having deals, right? Yeah, like a limited, uh, uh, like two day deal, three day deal, and those bots basically just bang, 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 just yeah. scalping. And of course, when you when you order, place the order, you need verification. Yes. But but his bro- his program, his bot, does it completely seamlessly. Yes. The the system doesn't even know that it's a scalping bot. Yes. Right. So so this is the danger right now. So I'm wondering, mm. you know, like a guy as smart as Elon that has his main complaint on on the Twitter platform while per- trying to get a purchase out of out of uh, Twitter. And you know, take over the company, and he didn't really want to. Yeah. Was how do you bot armies? Is this a, a good step in the way? We don't know enough about. Is this verification mm-hmm. a good way to take money for the company, but also to remove those elements that make the platform not great? Because we already know that there are a lot of uh, special interest groups that have thousands mm-hmm. or hundreds of thousands of bots that are on the platform just to spread misinformation. So we'll oh, just yeah. fix it. Yeah, that's a danger. That's yeah, my that's question. Danger, yeah. And I, I I, want to see what happens. Like by the time this podcast releases, we should already have those details. So we'll have to wait another week to see what happens there. And, um, but I, I, yeah. I still think that, you know, and we, we brought up some really good points about if this works, this, this gives verification to humans. Mm. Uh, it removes the bots, which was his main objection. So his the engineers are now in there working on stuff and they're looking at it. So maybe they figured out that this is possible. It will reduce the user base of Twitter. So when they do their first earnings, well, they don't even have to do that anymore. They don't need earnings calls anymore. They don't need reporting right? to the public, right? That's right. It's not a public traded company. So yeah. they'll, they'll reassess when the user base goes down and they'll have more information to support, uh, to report to their advertisers because advertisers are pulling their ads right now. So that mm-hmm. revenue has gone. This revenue will come in. Uh, and I've also heard that potentially there might be a second tier for uh, businesses and also mm-hmm. like super ultra celebrities at certain tiers of, uh, of, of influence, right? So let's just say that you're Kim Kardashian, right? And you have millions <laughs> of, of, of follows. You're going to pay a different rate than a journalist with 2,000 followers. Oh yeah, I mean, right. you know, I mean, they 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 earning they earning multi millions, right? Yes. Yeah. For example, I'm only earning whatever. So I'm not going to afford <laughs> that, monthly. right? Exactly. So they can afford something a bit more, right? It's exactly. like it's like paying a bit, but a bit more for advertising. Yeah. You know? And you brought up a, a good point about uh, about that again with uh, the platform actually becoming more mm. than it is. If Elon Musk wants to authenticate humans on the Twitter platform, uh, and similar platforms globally, like in China, WeChat. WeChat mm-hmm. is basically That's how right. business is done in China. Everything's authenticated. Yeah. Government knows exactly who you are. Uh, and yeah, unfortunately. Transa- <laughs> unfortunately, but transactions <laughs> happen with trust. That's true. Right? That is true. Yeah. So if we- uh, I mean, I, I've, I've seen, seen uh, people who are, uh, you know, the market, right? Yeah. You know, the with vegetables and meats and stuff like yeah. that, open market. I've seen uh, old ladies selling their produce. Yep. Right, they don't have a bank account, nothing, right? Yeah. But they have a phone, and uh, the people are just paying or oh, two dollars for a you know a bag of potatoes, yes, uh, and, and three dollars for a, for some broccoli, and they're just using the phone to go. Doop, 
Yeah. And and she just got it, transferred. And the other thing instantly. She, instantly. Instantly. And one of the things that I found really hilarious is that I heard about these um because there's a lot of rich, affluent kids in, in China at, at the at the nightclubs and everything, they'll throw up a WeChat um, logo on the screen and everyone that scans it will get a dollar. Oh, like, yeah. Like yeah. kind of like, you know, the <laughs> that's, that's the right, way it's yeah. done, right? That's it's the way it's done. It's done digitally now. Yeah. It's not physically with the cash and the, and the uh, what do you call it? The, the, the cash gun. The cash gun, yeah. right? So the note, Yeah, yeah. The, the, the build, yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly... You know, like this is this is an interesting time. He's the same guy mm. that brought us rockets to land themselves that are reusable. He's the same guy that True. brought um, mass adoption of EVs. I, Even for better mm. or for worse, people have polarizing opinions, probably because of him. But he was the mm. one that pushed the technology forward into the mainstream. Yeah. Is so? I mean, is he the guy? <laughs> I, I think he is. I think he's the guy who's going to push Twitter to have more features, usable. Real life features, yeah. right? And if he takes Dogecoin with him, oh, <laughs> I, I need, I need some Doge. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, have you seen yeah. it go up? It went up like it went up like because last week it just shot up. Funny and, enough, um, when when I said, "Oh, you know, I hope my Doge goes up after this acquisition," it did. I, I, like it I did. called it, it's yeah. like it did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have yeah. sold, but hey, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I can see good things coming out of Twitter. Is is painful right now? It is yeah. painful. There's a lot of but, um, uncertainty and a lot of people mm. that don't necessarily agree with the way that Elon Musk does business will actually be extremely angry initially, very skeptical. But I hope that from this chaotic hellfire yeah. mess, we find something that the industry can move forward on mm. because you need to get messy before you get better that's true that is true <laughs> yeah i mean i, I i've learned that my miss yeah my, my side you know so you got to get messy and and uh things will get better hopefully well hopefully um again you know like uh, i'm sorry if, uh, a lot of the twitter employees have lost their employment uh it's going to be tough for a lot of these families because they're so used to living on the fat of an og uh social media yeah. company they may have to move. Yeah. They may have to find a new life somewhere. But you know, again, you will all fall. Uh, you, you will all land on your feet if you if you work hard, like you did before, right? I, I know that a lot of people that mm. got hired by Twitter, they were not sucky people. They knew how to work. That's why you were hired in the first place. They just didn't have a place for you to realize your skills and hopefully you do somewhere else. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Positive. All right. <laughs> Moving yeah. on. Listen. <laughs> Yes, so um, last week, uh, AMD announced the latest Radeon 7000 uh, series graphics cards. Yes. And, um, you know, and that's, they did it with gamers in mind. And boy, what an event it was. Nvidia must be kicking themselves uh, with, you know, with the recent bad press and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, tell me more about uh, the bad press. What, what happens recently? <laughs> the, well, first of all, they... They released the, uh, the Nvidia now. Yep. They released the RTX 40 series, yes. right? So the big, the big one, right? 4090, mm. 24 yep. gigs, fifteen hundred dollars, yep. right? And then released two more versions: the RTX 4080, which is the, you know the one just yep. below it, uh, with uh, sixteen gigs, good performance, again better than the previous generation. And they released the 4080 12 gig, yep. okay? And but it was it was below the previous generation performance and people yeah. were just going screaming about it and then they'd be the bad press and, and what they happened? unlaunched it. You unlaunched they unlaunched things. it. So master class yeah. in unlaunching things. Now no <laughs> I, I heard that in uh, GPUs were lighting on fire faster than uh, yes. faster than conventional that's right. and then about vehicles. a couple of weeks later that's right they uh they, they there was news of people using getting the RTX forty ninety now the big yeah. card and they put them in it's massive right it's, it's like a heat pump it's huge they put it in they put this new connector in the sixteen pin power yeah. connector which Nvidia says yeah it's gonna save a lot of space and cabling okay but then uh, the power draw is so huge well over four hundred fifty to five hundred watts of power going through that cable right. Uh, high ampage and everything, it just melted that cable That's not connector good. and the connector on the PCB board of your graphics card, your $1,500 graphics card. Yeah, there was pictures all over the net and people just screaming about it. And, and then hmm. he says, oh, okay, uh, all you board makers out there, if you have any board returns, come back, send it to us and we'll take a look. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. Bad press, okay. Two bad press, one after another. Okay. But uh, AMD, however, 
they waited, they waited, they saw what's happening with NVIDIA, <laughs> and they said, yes, this is our time. It's our they, time. They announced it, Radeon, or Radeon, some people say, a 7000 series, and they come in two versions. Mm -hmm. uh, the big card is the, R, the Radeon RX uh, 7900 XTX, mm -hmm. right, 24 gigabytes. Yep. So very similar to the market at the high end, uh, competing against the high end the, heat pump, the, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> competing against the RTX 4090 from NVIDIA. But uh, the, that card is, again, very powerful. And the next model down is the 7900 XT without the X you know, okay. at the end. So that's 20 gigabytes. So again, if you people, some people, they like numbers, right? Yes. Think, oh, well, you know, uh, the uh, RTX 4080 is only 16 gig, right? That's the, the card next to went down. Yeah, but then yeah. this one has 20 gigabytes. Oh, people are going to go for that. But, but the whole thing was... The, the, they really sold it is that they're easy to upgrade. That's AMD's easy to upgrade. Uh, yeah, easy to upgrade. So new con no new they, connector. <laughs> no new connector. <laughs> they can they can keep the same eight pin PCI power connector you have in your graphics card right now. No changing of the cable. No new sixteen pin. Nothing like that. Right. So there's no issues of the melted connector. Melting the is cable. bad. Right. Yeah. And check this out. The highest end card that they have, the big, the, the RTX, uh, sorry, the RX 7900 XTX, yes. has a total board power of only 355 watts compared to NVIDIA's 450. Much more right? efficient. More efficient, That's more power efficient. That's right. And then people have been saying that oh, AMD's drivers suck and all that, but they've invested heavily over the last couple of years in a new unified AI. Yep user interface uh, with a one-click game optimization. So what does that mean? Well, you know when you have it going to the game, right? Yes. And you have to ch change all your settings, lighting on, uh, you know, ray tracing on, yes. and 16-bit uh, samples and how many frame rates and this and that. All, you know, you have to change your settings to, to optimize your game, right? Each time, each game. Well, this new graph, uh, user interface allows you to just click one button. Okay. On that particular game. Yeah. And they will uh, fully optimize the game settings ready for the graphics card to run. So that in itself is so easy. You don't have to worry about anything, right? So that's something that they took from NVIDIA that actually works. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, like props for where it is. I, I think I found that, that that feature was available on, on mm. NVIDIA. Uh, it, it also sounds like the clean installation feature was uh, implemented a little while ago, right? On, on AT, uh, AMD drivers, right? So yeah. it looks like that's all happening because one of the things that we used to all struggle with was uh, NVIDIA drivers getting stuck. So yeah. you, when you upgraded them, they wouldn't overwrite correctly. So a clean installation definitely helped that out. Yeah. So with a uh, with new software, like I I, I I always thought the AMD interface was a little hokey. It just didn't seem like it was slick. Mm. <laughs> but mm. you know that that's yeah, great the, news. The, yeah, the new AI is really good. I, I have a I was testing a uh, twenty four inch monitor with adaptive sync, right? Yep. So what the hell is that? It's to do with uh, syncing the games and the monitor fret yes. refresh rate so that it runs the highest frame rate. Uh, and, you know, you can just go into the software, Adrenaline, right? The AMD yep. Adrenaline software. You can just enable that. As long as your monitor supports it, yep. you just enable it. And it, I find uh, AMD's Adrenaline software much easy to use much more friendly it's so simple everything is there yeah and you can overclock your graphics card with it you can overclock your cpu with it if you have an amd okay. processor so everything is all integrated so and that's something nvidia that doesn't fantastic. have nvidia does not exactly. have that that's right that's right you have to use um uh, uh, uh geforce uh whatever brand it is third party own software okay. third party to overclock and stuff like that and also it doesn't overclock the cpu yeah yeah but this adrenaline software from amd overclocks your amd processor as well as your gpu oh that's a lot if fun. you wanted and it's just one click button it will optimize it it won't crash over to the higher settings it will take it to the max based on your specs which is great good i love it no it's fantastic and the other thing, and the other thing they are the first graphics card to have a DisplayPort 2.1. The GeForce is still only using 1.4. Oh, wow. So there it's a whole difference. generation difference. That's right. A 2.1 DisplayPort supports, check it out, 480 hertz at 4K. 480 wow. hertz at 4K. That's incredible. And wait, wait for it, 165 hertz at 8K. Excellent. That's 
crazy, right? And yeah, right now, uh, GeForce can only support, I think, um, 60 hertz. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, you know, but you need monitor to, to be able to support that, of course. Or TV. Uh, they're going to be working. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be working with a lot of uh, uh, monitor manufacturers yeah. from Samsung, LG, AOC, and all that kind of stuff to produce these monitors that can support this uh, refresh rate. No, it's going to take Crazy. a little bit of time for that to happen, right? Because the, I right. don't think any like mainstream monitors actually exist right now that have these high high refresh rates, right? That's right. Maximum, my one, for example, is only 144. Yeah, same. I have Which a 144 good, in the other room too. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this yeah. is, old. but it's I mean, old technology still. It's like at least six years is, old. Yeah. I mean, people are moving on to 165 hertz yeah. and 200 hertz, yes. right? And that's, that's, you know, crazy. Kind of like, yeah. So what's the punchline here? Uh, punchline, check it out. The highest end Radeon uh, RX 7000, yep. 79 Hundred XTX, the highest end graphics card that they have, right? That can compete. I wouldn't say it beat. It will compete against uh, uh, GeForce yep. RTX 4090. Check this one at nine ninety nine. Okay. The price is literally thirty percent cheaper, thirty three percent cheaper than GeForce RTX 4090. Okay, so there's another nine ninety nine. Crazy. It's the highest end. So what about what yeah. about the entry level? Uh, the uh, entry level, the 7900 XT at uh, 20, 20 gigs, uh, that was 899 Okay. So to be honest with you, for $100, I'll probably just go for the big one. Sounds about right. right. Sounds about right. So mm. what what did we learn in NVIDIA's masterclass on pricing? <laughs> well, Because according to Uncle Jensen, he said that the drop in pricing from generation to generation will no longer happen again. That's true. So uh, what happened AMD's here? proved... <laughs> yeah, well, AMD's put them different. And uh, I'm not sure whether AMD will make money on this, but yeah. it is definitely a something that, hey, a big, like, fingers up to NVIDIA. Because, you know, you think about it. What drives this market? What drives gamers, right? It is those people who actually play the games, yep. uh, that buy your graphics card and stuff yes. like that. You need to listen to them. You need to cater for them. You need to, you know, have, you know, built graphics card and products you know, based on their needs and have, you know, gamers in mind, yeah. right? When NVIDIA, it, they didn't really uh, think about that. So what makes NVIDIA money is the high-end GPUs for yeah. uh, data processing. Yes. Uh, such as the, um, I think it's, it's, they called it the GX something. Yeah. High-end, $80,000 kind of GPU data processing yeah. accelerators, they call so them. So that's right? where they're focused on right centers. now. And th that's where they focus. focused. Yeah. And the chips that they develop for that gets passed down to their RTX graphics card for gamers. So this is the consumer they, line. It's kind of an afterthought because obviously B2B yeah. funds B2C. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, but uh, AMD, uh, it's, they can, well, they're both ways. And I, I really have to give it to them because they're fighting uh, on both ends. Yeah. Enterprise sides, and consumer, right? right? They, they got to, they got to fight Intel on the oh, CPU yeah. side for the processors and they got to fight, uh, Nvidia for the graphics side. Yeah. And for them to survive as is with such huge support, uh, I'm a big fan Yeah, because I've always thought, right, you know, you're making a product for gamers in mind, for, for people who, you know, you can't afford an Intel because mm -hmm. back then Intel was super expensive oh, yeah, yeah. the chips, right? And you can just get an in AMD cheaper and overclock it and run it. So it's be just as good. Yeah. So it seems like a lot you know, of the brands that we've spoken to lately, including in EVGA, they're very community minded, but they are also a partner mm. of a company that maybe arguably wasn't so community minded. I mean, yes, they put their names mm. on big events and everything like that. I mean, anyone can do that, right? Microsoft can put their event and just bugger off. They just throw the money at the problem and just leave like no presence at all. Right. Yeah. It seems like, you know, EVGA became incompatible with this partnership because mm. of uh, like people like uh, like Jacob, they talk to the community, they have a podcast, they interact and engage with the consumer audience and they figure out what they want. But at some point, I guess they're not able to supply that in their partnership. So it has to yeah. come from somewhere. It has to come. It's too much of a roadblock to be able to yeah, be that a, person, right? It, that's right. Communities drive development yeah. and you know without them then you know with nvidia it, they didn't really think about they just thought okay frame rates frame rates frame rates yeah but they didn't think about price they didn't think about upgradability and stuff like that 
the the kicker for for this was AMD says in their presentation, you don't have to do anything. You just take your old graphics card out, put this new one That's in. Funny. <laughs> That's funny. <it. laughs> <laughs> no wow. changing power supplies, no changing cables. You're going to get 50, 60% improvement over the previous generation. That's incredible. Now, do we so, know anything about uh, performance in terms of the creator space? Like, is like I, I always knew that OpenCL was not mm -hmm. as good as NVIDIA CUDA mm -hmm. when it came to optimization in uh, creative packages like Adobe um, Creative Suite yeah. and other like uh, Maya and, and other other packages, right? Do we know if they've caught up on that space? Uh, I'm not, I'm, I, I haven't purchased a AMD yeah. card for quite some time. I used to have one, but when CUDA came out, mm. it became a very, uh, very straight choice for me to go that route. Have they caught up? Um, in CUDA space, I think they're getting there. I wouldn't say they're 100%. You know, they're not going to overtake NVIDIA, yeah. but uh, they've improved on that definitely. They said that they got this uh, new graphics card, the 7000 series, will include a uh, new codec for decoding okay. and encoding video, yep. uh, they, the latest standards and everything. And uh, it, it has um, built in, in the core of the, of the uh, graphics GPU, mm -hmm. chiplets. So they oh. can dedicate different chiplets to do certain tasks. Okay. Uh, to improve, like you said, uh, media streaming or media content okay. creating and, uh, and things like that. So there, there's definitely, um, improvement in performance, both content creating, mm -hmm. gaming, streaming and things like that. And, and they really look into how, because they match it with their own processes, yes. with the infinity cache and everything. So think about it. It's, it's AMD is not to be like discounted because, mm -hmm. They, they actually take the CP technology, graphics card technology, and they just put it together uh, uh, into one seamless kind of like platform. If you think about uh, Intel, great, great chips, yeah. very, you know, st robust for content creating. Graphics, media not so much. <laughs> graphics, no good. Yeah. So they have to rely on a, a, a partner, right, such as NVIDIA. And then they have to, you know, really kind of work together yeah. to that, get the drivers in and all that kind of stuff. But, but... Uh, with, with AMD, is is they're working towards a seamless integration and total like um, you know platform yeah. to use. You you don't have you don't have to worry about what kind of GeForce card yeah. you need to get. You don't need to worry about what type of Intel chip. You just go for the Ryzen seven thousand yeah. AMD uh, Radeon seven thousand series. Put them together, bang, it will work totally seamless. And uh, I'm looking forward to to building a Radeon 7000 and, and uh, AMD 7000 system. Well, I, I am due for an upgrade. <laughs> I just I just want to ask these questions because uh, you know, like I don't just play games. I have to uh, do work as well too. And one of the things that has yeah. helped me a lot and saved me a lot of time is to have an NVIDIA graphics card with solid CUDA uh, integration mm, to allow true. me to accelerate encode, yeah. recode, decode uh, of, of, of files when I'm editing uh, 4K uh hopefully potentially at some point 8k video yeah. right so uh, if it holds me back i might have to think twice about it but if we see some benchmarks that say otherwise i yeah. you know i would wait for the benchmarks um it's coming out december the 13th okay uh available to pre-orders right now i think and but even after that you probably see third party uh develop uh board makers yeah. make them you know after january and stuff like that you probably see us yes and so on um i would suggest if you're an intel person working for video stuff and you know you know production stuff i would uh, get on um you know trying to sample the amd i mean if there's a system ready who's if you know a friend who's got yeah. that ready to try it out yourself because you don't want to just jump on but blindly right yeah. you want to see how it performs you want to see how whether it's smooth enough for you you know existing work mm -hmm. and stuff like that, especially with rendering right? yeah because you know I, i've actually seen two systems side by side and um I can't. I won't say which was AMD, which is Intel, but when I put the original video uh, footage into the the editor, yeah, there was a a a voice delay. Oh, that's not in good. Certain, yeah, sync. That was like not right now. Okay. I'm talking about previous when I yeah, was yeah. Uh, comparing, and uh, it was nothing wrong with the video files. Uh, it, it was just the way that they were being kind of rendered. I guess. Okay. There was a slight like microsecond delay huh. with the voice uh, on some of the video, and on the other platform it was working fine. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I don't know why. It could be the graphics card. It could be the processor. It could be something not working together, right? Yeah. 
um, not synchronizing. And uh, that's, that's you know, yes. but you have to really try it out. If you're an Intel person already, uh, find someone who's got the AMD, give it a try, yeah. look at the benchmarks and so on and see how you feel. Have they brought Bolt onto yeah. the AMD platform yet? Sorry? Have they bought Thunderbolt onto the platform yet? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So certain Thunderbolt's boards, on, right? Uh, I know that uh, certain motherboard manufacturers will have Thunderbolt in there, uh, if you want it. Yes. Uh, of course, those yeah. are found on the more premium motherboards, right, for AMD. But uh, Okay. See, I, a reason why I asked that is because, you know, like if we have a bunch of hard drives that we're taking from the field and we're loading them into a caddy to edit, mm. that's something that's very um, – that is important to uh, video editors working out in the field. If their workstation can't use the dock that they've had attached to their Intel system before, it becomes a huge problem and headache. <laughs> Especially if you're transferring large files. Exactly. Right? I'm talking hundreds of gigs. Yeah. like If you're filming 4K. Like you're bringing a caddy in from the field and you can't plug this in. <laughs> it's bad news. It's bad news. Well, it's, yeah. it's good to see AMD really, you know, kicking things up. I. I am considering going AMD again. I, I'm due for a new system, uh, or I buy a new laptop. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So, um, so what, what's what's happening with Matter? What's Matter? Yeah. Well, what's going on there? Speaking of uh, industries that don't know what they're doing, um, the smart home space has been completely fractured for the longest time. Right? You have things that are Amazon. You have things that are Google. Mm. You have things that are HomeKit. Apple being HomeKit, right? No one works with HomeKit. Mm. So Google and, and Amazon um, work together probably the best, and they work with a number of different devices, including your mm -hmm. Philips Hue light bulbs, which are probably some of the first things that people buy, smart switches, um, even your Xbox devices, like they're all Alexa or Google enabled, but no one plays with HomeKit, right? And and Samsung mm. smart things, like what the heck is that, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's been like if you buy a switch and you don't know if it, if you're in Apple house and you buy a, a smart switch, chances are it's not going to work for you or work very poorly, right? So mm -hmm. in the background of all of this smart home stuff, a uh, consortium has been getting together made up of all of these brands because no one wants to play in this space because – now you're just getting into like you you can't have a fo a home with different switches working on different apps. No one wants that. It's a poor experience for anyone of the Apple, yeah, yeah. Google, Amazon, um, smart things, and other spaces. Like it just it's not good. So they got together and they created something uh, a, a unified standard called Matter. Mm. And why it matters is because it finally allows all these devices to talk to one another and control one another through a, a basic unified software hardware interface that mm. is congruent throughout the entire uh, lineup. Right now, as it stands, devices that are going to be natively out of the box matter compatible are not here right. yet. But, re but a few days ago at, at an event uh, overseas in Europe, they have revealed all the specifications. They have now mm -hmm. have prototypes they were showing off with uh, HomeKit devices and, and, and Google devices all controlling each other using oh, Matter, the Matter standard. And how this is being done, it's either in software for the newer devices to have the Matter threaded radios on board mm -hmm. you know, and software pending or – you buy a Matter Bridge that takes your devices from the other system and bridges it into Matter. Oh, that'd be yeah. interesting because if you already have an existing Lacetta, yes. you don't want to like oh, go and get some new devices just because you want to get rid of Matter. I know. Right? So for you, for example, that'd be perfect. You need to get the bridge, yeah. right? And then you have all your other devices connected up to this bridge, yes. and then it'd be matter compatible. Yeah. So Google, Google, and Google and uh, Amazon work pretty well together. I don't have any Apple devices, so I don't have to worry about that. But if mm. we had Matter as a standardized platform, everyone, everything wouldn't need its own bridge. Like you could have a, a hub built into your uh, your router. Like my Eero routers already have Matter built into it. I like mm -hmm. the the threaded radios. It just needs a software or firmware update to be turned on so that it can be become the hub of my house. So any new oh, Matter devices yeah. can actually link onto that if they have Matter so, 
standard. Yeah, so it'd be like a bit like mesh Wi-Fi, right? It is a mesh, Remember? actually. It is. Thread, thread, yeah. thread radio is, is like a, a mesh system that runs throughout your house uh, that allows this connectivity, right? And because it allows this connectivity, it makes everything work better together with a, with a single interface. Now, the funny thing mm. is that right now, as it stands, all this, all this stuff has been released. It's been announced, but none of this stuff will actually work together until early next year. Right. So currently, okay. if there's some devices that already have the standard on board, they might work together. But for anyone that has an iOS, iOS device, none of the apps have been updated to allow you from any manufacturer to use this standard. Mm. So iOS still needs to catch up yeah. because of their walled garden. There's probably a lot of protocols and, and things that Apple needs to allow in order to let this into yeah. the ecosystem. Yeah. Of course, right? So it's exciting. It will be messy, like Twitter. Because people are trying to figure out how to work together under the standard, and even some of the um, some of the vendors that are in this consortium, like um, Philips, which is owned by mm. Signify, um, they said that right now as it stands, um, we still don't know certain key things. Like we are trying to get them to get the standards down so that we can take this hardware and test it. But in order for us to put out a product that says Matter. We still need the other other like things that you want us to do of the standard. Like they don't yeah. have enough information. It's just like the whole Nvidia thing where it's like, yeah, here's the hardware, but the drivers are not available yet to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> Pain it's, the ass. it's having that standardization, right? Uh, because if you if you're the consortium yeah. and you know you have a group of uh, uh, companies in yeah. there. Uh, it's like MPEG, right? Yeah. I mean, any device. Do you know any device that uses or you know, plays MPEG, yeah. whether it's MP3, MP4, you have to pay a license you to, do. to, the MPEG, to sort of MPEG, right? So a similar, similar thing here where you have Matter, yeah. Matter Consortium. If your device wants to be on the Matter compatible, you know, certified, yeah. then you've got to pay a license. Same as USB, uh, same and as that, USB. And, you know, like USB. Now Apple has to pay yeah. them. <laughs> exactly. So, so that's why it, sometimes people drag their feet. Like Apple, they're going to drag their feet on at Matter, saying, "Yeah, it was, it, we'll 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 jump on there later and whatever." Yeah. And just basically, they just don't want to pay because they they think they're you know their own proprietary home kit thing is going to work better and so yeah, on. Yeah, but the funny thing is that while, Apple right? stands to benefit the most because no one buys home kit. <laughs> like no one buys it. Like who who, who goes no, to the don't. store and buys? Oh, I want it to be HomeKit. There's only one company <laughs> on the market, and I think it's an Elgato. Uh, sorry, a Corsair brand. Uh, Corsair under the Corsair umbrella, uh, like whatever their yeah, main company yeah. is. But Eve, Eve is the only HomeKit native company, right? And they're the smallest mm. sliver of the entire <laughs> ecosystem. If anyone wants to push this, it's got to be Apple. Yeah, right. That's true. It has to be them. I think. If if um you know if if I think if this matter is working hundred percent, people see how integrated and how easy yeah. it is to use. Then you know I've always I mean, years ago I've seen people with the you know those fridges yep. and it was like uh, Alexa or I can't yeah. remember which one uh, home automation and everything, and you could put like cans of like beer or coke or yep. whatever drinks, soft drinks into this tray, and it will auto detect. There's not enough, and it will send a message to Amazon's yeah. shopping. I think Amazon does do that, and that's yeah, it does all that automatically. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it like years ago in one of the trade shows. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It is, but I've actually seen anyone with that fridge. I haven't seen anyone buy that fridge. I haven't seen anyone use this service. Yeah, it's like a right? lot of things. It's capable of doing that in certain markets, but when it comes to North America, not everyone's playing nicely together. So. There's no, yeah. it doesn't link up, right? I mean, in the U.S., I think there was an opportunity and a potential um, potential for any fridge company to actually integrate once they figure out that if they're matter if they're if their fridge is matter compatible, it doesn't matter if you ask Siri, if you ask Alexa, if you ask that's, Google to that's true. link up to your fridge yeah. and order stuff. Because yeah, because that fridge was Alexa enabled, yeah. whatever compatible. And then you have a, another fridge on the other side, which Samsung branded, yep. and they're not going to be using Alexa when they can use their own smart things, right? S smart yeah. things, yeah, and things like that. So, so that's why you're, you're yeah. right. Having everything 
you know, ma- in this matter consortium, matter, yeah. matter compatible, you don't have to worry about whether your brand fridge is whatever brand LG or yeah. whatever. Sometimes you just know it's matter compatible. You can just in- in- integrate it into your system yeah. completely. The, the home, funny thing about buying way. things from a fridge or any device is the fact that you need a marketplace. And Amazon is obviously the biggest marketplace to order something. Mm. I can order something by accident if I wanted to from my from my Alexa, right? scary but you know like i know that i know that uh walmart is now finally coming online they're going to be delivering like an amazon they just they just had challenges with logistics and everything like that but they will be delivering at amazon speeds hopefully they they they're deploying a new um a mm-hmm. new fleet of uh of, of of delivery vehicles in different demographics hopefully this takes the um takes the strain off amazon because a lot of these drivers mm-hmm. are peeing in bushes and whatnot we know that's happening, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Having a competition makes it better for everybody because now that because there's enough there's enough business to go around. Let's just face mm, it, right? Definitely. And yeah, if there's yeah. another competitor, Walmart, if there's a, a smaller competitors that serve smaller niches. Everyone's going to get a piece of the puzzle. Drivers will be happier. Maybe we'll pay a little bit more money, but people pay for convenience all the time, mm. right? So. So okay. in the big scheme so this, of things, um, very good hmm. idea. Hopefully, we get uh, software updates to allow us to backwards compatibility with everything via hubs, and we get forward yeah. compatibility with new devices coming online. They have Matter built in, so they start talking to each other immediately. So hopefully, no one needs to buy new hardware like Nvidia wants you to, and you know, like it yeah. drops in easily, like an AMD GPU. <laughs> <laughs> Hint taken. Yeah. yeah. So That's hopefully true. next year, starting, we'll see some of the software updates. Yeah. Uh, then maybe a year or so after that, we'll see more of the hardware that says Matter certified mm. from every single brand that puts out. So that home pod that you have sitting at home right now that's useless, it might become useful soon. <laughs> <laughs> mm, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Cool. All right. So Intel. Let's gonna talk <laughs> Intel. Yeah. So Intel, as you know, big competitor of AMD. Yeah, of course. So they launched the uh, 13th gen uh, core processor a couple of months yes. ago, and uh, it was a fairly well received, um, you know, product uh, processor. Thanks to the fact that you can upgrade to this new chip without having to change your existing Z690 mm. board. So Good last idea. year, if you bought a 12th gen, right? Yep. Um, with the Z690 board, uh, it's great news because all you need is just change the processor. And that's, I think it's to do with the TikTok yeah. um, concept that they have, right? Now, is so Z690 thing, DDR4 or DDR5? DDR, they have both. Okay. They have, if you, you can use existing DDR4 RAM if you put by a certain board. But then it's, uh, it's already. Is there something else I can help? <laughs> oh, so Speaking of which. <laughs> sorry, just. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so um, I, I get the DDR5 board, yeah, which is uh, you know something you can upgrade to. Um, you know, so now we know, you know, with AMD's recent success with the Ryzen processors, right? Over the past few years, people know AMD is making a comeback. And, and, you know, they released the seven nanometer processor. They now released the five nanometer processor. In fact, at one point, they've overtaken Intel mm-hmm. in market share in terms of desktop processors. So they've done really well, AMD, right? Um, you know, but, but Intel, don't worry about them. They can still make money off the server yeah. sides. Uh, but how are things about the change? Because, you know, with the reports of Intel uh, pushing the fabrication process for making the chips, the wafers, yeah. uh, to four nanometer. So they, they, they're they going to try and, you know, jump the gun and and you know, hit it, hit AMD with a four nanometer mm. rather than the five, right? Um, for because the current processors that they have use the ten nanometer yeah. fabrication process, right? So in other words, the smaller the die, uh, the more power efficient it is, less voltage, and more processing. That's right. Able, That's know, right. To do with the chip, so they're going to plan for uh, a, a three nanometer, a four nanometer by twenty twenty three, and three nanometer by twenty twenty four. So wow. I'm probably thinking, how the hell are they going to do that? Um, yeah, how know, are they going to do AMD's that? AMD's going to, yeah. So, so a- 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 AMD already done the uh, five nanometer, five nanometer, yeah. and they're working on the four yeah. nanometer and three nanometer. That's by the end of twenty twenty three. So that's going to be very head on, you know, competition. Yes. So, how is Intel going to do it? Uh, at the moment, the good thing about uh, AM- AMD is that the the the, the chips, the manufacturing, are, are done abroad, mostly done in. Uh, in Taiwan, yeah, TSMC. Yes. That's right. Yeah, yeah, TSMC, and 
the, the, of course, with that, there's a problem because of the political of course, situation of course. that's happening with Taiwan, China, well, and, and US. Well, so, there's also um, like if 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 if, if you know, for the audience, right? TSMC <laughs> actually manu- is is basically the world's chip manufacturer, if you will, right? Yeah. This is why it's yeah. a strategic asset. It's uh, a multinational company. It's publicly traded. The U.S. government uses them. Every European government uses them for yeah. especially Qual- uh, Qualcomm ARM chips come out of that factory. Uh, many mm-hmm. of the smaller uh, manufacturers also pull chips out of that. Yep. Apple is one of their biggest Apple. customers because M1, That's M2 true. all come out of that factory. All the uh, a- yeah. uh, Cortex uh, A14, A- A15 chips come out of that factory, right? There's a lot of things that – TSMC makes that this cannot fall into the wrong hands. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So to you know, mitigate that risk, uh, Intel have never actually worked with uh, you know TSMC yeah. to produce Intel chips. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Intel have their own fabrication, pro- uh, you know, factories right. and plants to do that, and um, that's what they're going to be doing for the next couple of years. Is that they're already planning to build a new. Uh, Fab yeah. in, I think, Arizona. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's already been and, being built. Arizona, I think yeah. that's, that's so, right. That's like 20 billions of dollars investment, which is yeah. great because now they, they're going to be making chips, the, the next gen chips, uh, the, the five yeah. nanometer, the four nanometer Intel yeah. now, not the uh, uh, AMD. So they're going to be making those chips for Intel themselves and they can control how they, you know, whether they're going to produce them locally, uh, whether they're going to, you know, from from which factories because they own the factories yeah. they own the factories around the world they have them in um i think one in dublin they have one in um uh, israel israel yep yep and then they have one in uh, malaysia that's right so intel have these own plants and yeah. they can control how production chip yeah. production could be versus done. tsmc so, is mainly in taiwan it's one place so that's that's a yeah potentially that's an issue if something mm. were to happen to taiwan overnight from something something <laughs> yeah, <could> ha- <laughs> uh, they were planning to uh, build their own f- fab in Arizona yeah. in com- in competition with yeah. Intel. So uh, that story is I'm not sure what's happening with that, but apparently they're going to get some funding from the U.S. government to develop yeah. their own fab in places like Arizona because it's like a, like a tech fab place it's, right now it's all it's land missing. basically all the chips coming out yeah the there, only right? problem is water yeah. the only problem is getting water yeah, yeah, tr- that's yeah. true that's true so uh if, if the if tsmc uh, is able to build their own fab in arizona with the help of the u.s because again tsmc are those the taiwanese company they make a lot of chips for a lot of the brands yeah. such as like i said all the mobile chip uh, all the mobile it's very uh, it's uh, very important like uh, even google works with tsmc to build their 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 chips like all yeah. of the pixel 6 chips pixel 7 chips the tensor core chips they're all based on certain designs that tsmc is familiar with that's where they come yeah. from htc which is um which is actually um partially owned by Google now the 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 mobile division um, from a merger in 2015 or something like that. That was a while back. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. that's all that's all there. And and t- in Taiwan, to be perfectly honest, they are the world's partner. They are the they are the special friend behind the scenes that lets you have all the glory while they do all the hard work behind the scenes. But they're happy for you. They're so humble. Mm, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I think I think uh, the difference is that TSMC, uh, apart from the AMD chips that they yeah. make, all of the other chips that they make are ARM, yeah. which is risk based. That's right. So uh, reduced instructions, uh, less voltage, uh, more more kind of yeah. energy efficient. And that's trending too. And like I said, those yeah, that's those chips are found in mobile phones, tablets, and things like that. And, you know, of course, they're making the M1 and M2 yeah. for uh, Apple. Again, risk based processors, ARM. Uh, designs, uh, whereas Intel and AMD are Cisco based, based complex instructions. Yeah, yeah they're, they're more uh, complex yep. instructions, meaning more more capacitors, more resistors, yes. and, and all that kind of stuff, which means produce more heat. That's right. Less energy efficient. And that, and <laughs> and that like, keeps the uh, cooling just... industry in 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 in, uh, in the market, right? <laughs> so if uh, CPU coolers and that whole market wouldn't exist oh. without Intel, 
That's right? true. That's true. All in one cooler is liquid yeah, cooling. Our, our, our friends know. over at uh, what? What are our favorite fans? They're not Chua with their gray and weird colored fans, but we love them. The beige, they're yeah, very yeah. high quality. And the thermal take with the RGB all fans. All sorts of colors yeah. and reversible fins and fans. So that entire yeah, industry, that DIY industry, literally would not exist without Intel's hot and heavy big computer <laughs> cases, right? Imagine how weird it would have been if everything was like a device that you, like a laptop. Everything would be a laptop. Oh, that'd right? be boring. That'd be, right? right? You know, and the <laughs> DIY spirit wouldn't actually be there because of the fact that, you know, like we never knew any different, right? So how different the world would mm. be if everything was just risk-based. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I mean, you know, uh, I think the back in the, I think back in the seventies, I'm not sure people knew knew this. Um, you know, Unix, yep. right? Which is Linux. Yes. Uh, a lot of the different versions of uh, OS, and um, they mostly run on a ARM uh, RISC chips. Yes. It's only the x86, which is Intel, yep. right? That you, uh, well, which are basically RISC chips that run on um that that os with their uh, yeah. operating it's all because of windows Microsoft. it's all because of windows windows, windows made yeah, that like industry that. right and that's true and that's max true. made another industry so diversity is great lots of lots of people made a lot of money <laughs> you have options this, having options, you have options right <laughs> indeed but yeah that's true and now so you know it'll be interesting to see how intel will you know with their new fab uh, in arizona making these new chips at uh, four nanometer, three nanometer, hopefully next couple yeah. of years. How well will they compete against um, AMD, uh, new Ryzen's and things like that? So but that's still so, a very, like said, very long way away because I'm like, the world is, is kind of unstable right mm -hmm. now. We also have a, uh, you know, a couple election or two before, you know, stuff happens. Yeah. Few elections. There's a, there's a war going yeah. on, supply chain issues, uh, raw materials yeah. issues. There's still a, uh, free, not free on right. um, uh, neon neon gas from neon. from Ukraine is is Ukraine. still an issue, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the basically is a is a uh, inert gas, yeah. uh, a non reactive gas we call it inert, is used to uh, put, you know in the in the fab in in, in the yes. fabrication kind of lab where they you know they need that to it's to the laser needle that all the silicon the the silicon yeah, the, the edges, right silicon, so it's very yeah, the silicon, very yeah. important and and it's a very uh this very very uh, intricate delicate yeah. process it's a byproduct of the he, steel industry right which has been deeply impacted war in in with mm. russia uh because some of their plants are now offline energy is an issue uh people are living on the ground there's no workers right like uh, the 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 economy has yeah. has been put to a standstill so uh, it'll be interesting what happens in the next few years. Uh, also, there's there's been you know talk intentions with Taiwan and and you know these things mm. all impact the global economy. So the fact that uh, in the big scheme of things, the U.S. wants to move um, manufacturing capability into the U.S. Also, we have uh, Foxconn also looking to move into Ohio. That never happened during the previous administration, but it's happening now yeah. because we talked about something uh, in the last podcast where Foxtron is now looking to actually do their plant there for EV assembly. So the plant EVs, yeah, the yeah, plant was yeah. always always the plan was always there to do something with that. They just didn't know what it was. <laughs> and I know that there was all these stories about, you know, like, oh, they built the plant, but you know, like the land was cheap. They can hold on to that. Now they know what they're mm -hmm. they're gonna do with it. Maybe it's not such a bad thing that they waited for a while, right? So who knows? Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, you know, I, th I think it's, it's, it's right. I mean, would you pay extra if it was made locally? No, it should be right? cheaper if it's made locally. <laughs> but because of um, because of the, the the you know the labor, you know. Because okay, the, okay, I know. I see what you're saying. Okay, so right? if I were to pick a local artisan built widget, would I pick that over something that came from Amazon overseas? The answer would be: I'm always about buying once. And I'm too I'm mm -hmm. too cheap to buy poor, I'm I'm too cheap to buy things yeah. that I, I'm I'm just too cheap. I don't have enough money to buy multiple times. If that product was was definitely objectively better, of course I would buy the local product. Of course. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. That's 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 basically it. I mean, if because um, of course the cheaper labor, 
uh, abroad. That's why some of the chips, for in- Intel, yeah. for example, made in Malaysia, made in other countries, um, and then of course it gets shipped to the yeah. US. Okay, if the plant was actually moved back to Arizona to the US, for example, for high production of desktop processors, yeah. but because of the shipping of raw materials coming in, plus you have uh, a higher wage for labor in the US, would it be? Would you pay more for an Intel processor? Like right now, for example, um, say say seven nine nine yeah. for a, I don't know, say for processing Intel, but you have to pay an extra premium for a hundred dollars on top mm. because it was made in US. This is. Locally. I think this is the qu- the same question that you would ask about um, EVs built in China, right? Like Teslas are built in China. Germany, oh, yeah, true, true, uh, true. Texas, and California. Which ones have the least amount of defects, right? Uh, I think that as of this moment, I think that you would probably be hard pressed to find any bad cars coming out of a German plant because they're they have that's true. high they're quality. They're very strict. <laughs> Europeans are very right? strict with the <laughs> and and you know that's something that the rest of the plants can learn from, right? The U.S. plant, the one in California, has has been the the plant that has seen all of the defects and everything but they are also the hub for the new production lines to be built so if your mm-hmm. your car was built in california chances are they were experimenting with things the entire time to have a more objective perspective right so if you got mm-hmm. your vehicle later you you waited you waited until they figured everything out your pro, your your car probably has no problems because it was either built in Texas where all the processors were handed over there, or it could have come from, it, it won't come from Germany. It won't come from China, but you, waiting, waiting for that process to be refined and learning from all the other yeah. plants globally, I think makes a better vehicle. Mm. So could the U S build a better product? If, especially if they're not the place where it started, I, I think so, because if they learned those processes overseas and they got it right day one in the U S plant, I would buy that. Yeah. yeah, I would. I might not yeah. pay but as much of a premium. It's, it'll probably, yeah, premium. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind if I knew uh, back in the overclocking days, yeah. right? The golden sample. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. right. That's right. There were certain samples of the the, the chip die, the core, yeah. the the processor, that were made from certain countries, and there was, and it was that batch that were superb for yeah. overclocking, and people just buying that particular. Batch and they were made in say Malaysia. Oh, Costa Rica. Was made in, I don't know. The Intel House Costa, Costa Rica. Rica. Yeah, Costa That's Rica. Right. That Costa Rica is the other one. Yeah, yeah. So, so people were choosing which core, which processor to yeah. buy from, which, uh, which were they made from? Where they're uh, bin, so, where they're bidding for enterprise, yeah. etc. Right. So, yeah. So, so yeah. If I knew the chips were in the US, uh, and I'd pay a premium, premium for that, knowing that I can overclock. Yeah. or higher then i'll probably go for or that. if i'm not worried about then, that i just need to run it stop clock speeds and i don't need it to fail then i might buy one of the other chips right but again you know it just depends on if the u.s chip is truly better and if they're only like i mean here's the thing right if if i if if i buy a domestic car the domestic car is cheaper mm. because it's built locally because of all the shipping chips are small right yeah so that yeah. premium has to justify what they're paying or they can be like uh, shipping costs. They aggr- they they smooth it out over all the plants, and the pricing is mm. just the same. It's just it's built yeah. locally. So I hope they go that route because you can't really price yeah. a chip that differently from place to place. Then you get an entire gray market, just like camera lenses, right? You mm. it becomes a gray market. Yeah, that's true. True. Oh, camera lenses. Oh my god, we could we should talk about that for another podcast, maybe in the future. Yeah, I have no clue. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Intel. So watch out for Intel because they could come back uh, stronger. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to kill AMD, but they definitely yeah. come back stronger, and they'll have new plants producing new chips, uh, and uh, we'll see how they will do. Or you might go AMD. So <laughs> I'll just stay yeah. with AMD. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think we'll wrap it up for this uh, week's show. Hope you enjoyed uh, our topics. And, of course, if you can uh, engage with us at any time, um, you can find me at uh, Winston Chim on Twitter or whatever they're going to rename it. Are they going to keep calling it Twitter? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Winston Chim and Instagram and Winston Chim and mostly lifestyle stuff. So, Stephen, what about you? Well, you can find me on Elon's Chaotic Hellscape at Stephen Fung. <laughs> Please engage with me. Don't yell at me. <laughs> 
<laughs> and also uh, on Zuckerberg's Metaverse on Instagram. Oh, that's right. Uh, you can find me at Stephen Fung over there. Uh, I do a little bit of everything. Uh, so if you do want to slide into my DMs and you have something for me, you know, do let me know. Happy to engage with you on that platform as well, too. Great. All right. Until next time, this is the podcast show with Stephen and I, uh, Winston. <laughs> Until then, see you soon. Bye. Okay.